Today I've come inside to do my opening because, frankly, it's really cold and miserable outside and the workshop is freezing, so I thought I'd come inside and do it from here. And maybe I'll do some more from here. It uh, seems like quite a nice way of doing it. Anyway, I'm going to show you today how I made this plant stand. So I bought the pot for my local garden center, which wasn't too expensive, eight pounds, and then made this from oak. It's a gift for a friend, but uh, if I can streamline the process a little bit more, I might sell some at my local craft fair. Um, because it was the first time I did this, it actually took me a while to actually sort it out and figure out how to do it best. And I made a few mistakes along the way, that's for sure. But um, yeah, I'm quite pleased with it. I'm also going to show you how to do a little super glue repair. Um, there was uh, a split in the wood um, on one of the pieces and it seemed a shame to waste a whole piece of oak, or a small piece, but I didn't want to waste it. So um, just a quick easy repair with a bit of super glue to stop uh, the split getting any bigger. Um, and that's about it. I'll see you at the other end of the film. See you later. Also, what's nice about doing this inside is that if I can move this around out of the way, I've had a little bit of company, which has been nice. And Oakley's been very patiently sitting there wondering what on earth I'm doing as I do take after take and forget what I was going to say. So the plant pot holder consists of two parts, the cross section that the plant pot sits on, and if I'll get out of the way, and the four legs. I'll start off by showing you how I make the cross section, and just running it through the planer now, I want to make it the correct thickness and nice and parallel on both sides. Once I've done that, I'm going to cut it to length using my miter saw. To find the length, I just measured the diameter of the pot and then added about 10 millimeters so that I had some leeway on either side. Now it was after I'd cut them all down that I noticed this split. So I'm going to use some super glue or CA glue to just repair it. I don't want to make another piece because I'd have to then make all four pieces the same size again and it would be a real hassle. This is much easier. So this is very liquidy CA glue and it sort of sucks down into the crack nicely. You can get thicker glue and you can even get coloured glue, which is nice. It doesn't need a clamp. I'm just going to use some masking tape, although I try to tie it quite tightly around to keep it in place, but it will dry very quickly, of course, being super glue. I always manage to get some glue on my fingers, which is really annoying. Just going to put another piece on here, just to keep it nice and tight. There we go, always get it on my fingers. Don't have to leave that for very long, it will set and then when we come back to it, we can just peel off the tape and you should have a nice clean repair. Probably just a little bit of sanding to um, get rid of any excess glue that's on the surface, but you'll barely be able to see it. It's a really good way of saving bits of wood that have just got a little crack in them. The joint I'm using for this is called a half lap joint and what it consists of is cutting a dado halfway through the wood on each piece so that they then slot together. If you did this with hand tools you'd use a saw and a chisel, saw down the two edges and then chisel out the shape. But what I'm doing with this is I'm using my bandsaw to 
cut away as many pieces as I can just running along the area that I want to cut out and then these little sort of comb bits can then be pressed out quite easily and then if you're careful you can then very carefully run it across the blade just to smooth it out before finally cleaning up with a chisel like this one given to me as a present from my friends Gavin and Claire so thanks guys they're really nice a quick dry fit it's not quite as tight as I'd hoped but it's good enough a little bit of glue and we can press the two pieces together and then just using a single clamp I'm going to clamp them together and then we're finished with this part apart from some sanding and cleaning up later now we move on to the legs I'm going to get four legs from this piece so I've just got to measure how much I need for each one I've seen quite a few plant pot holders that have got straight legs on either side which would be much easier to make but I want this to look a bit more elegant so I've decided to put tapers along the legs at the top and bottom to make it look a little bit nicer. I'm just going to run it through my bandsaw again. Because it's got a nice straight edge I can run it against that fence and get a nice straight cut although it's still probably not as clean as I'd get if I had a table saw. I really must get a table saw one of these days. But this does the job for the moment. Always take it easy when I get to the end so the wood doesn't suddenly release. You've got to keep your fingers away from that blade. Here I'm going to cut the tapers. I've marked them up with a pencil, uh, but I'm not using a fence. I'm just cutting it as straight as I can by hand. Again with a table saw you could set up a fence at an angle and get them all perfect. But this is a pretty good way of doing it because all I need to do afterwards is sand off the edges and straighten them up using my disc sander. And then finally just doing some sanding by hand to get all the edges perfectly clean and neat and smooth. So that's all four legs ready to go. And I'm now going to do a similar thing to what I did earlier with the bandsaw. I'm going to cut out a very small little dado and this is for the cross section to fit inside. Carefully running the blade across to smooth it again. Now we're ready for a dry fit. We're going to need some clamps and we're going to need some glue. One of them is very slightly loose but all the others fitted really nicely which I'm very pleased with. Adding a little bit of glue and what have I forgotten? The masking tape again. So I'm just going to put this round all the edges so that if there's any squeeze out when it's clamped it won't leave a mark on the wood and it'll be much easier to clean. It's really hard to get into corners to clean out dried glue. So if you tape around it first it makes life a lot easier if you remember to do it of course. This was surprisingly fiddly because if you didn't get the clamp dead center it tended to push the legs either out or in. The observant amongst you will have noticed there are some holes drilled inside each of these dados. If you remember at the beginning of the video I said I'd made a few mistakes. And I made a few mistakes along the way that's for sure. See? Well, I initially tried to use dowels to fit the legs, but, and I'm going to blame my tools here, I know you shouldn't, 
my drill press, which has now found a new home, thanks to FreeCycle, was wobbling so much that I couldn't get the holes perfectly straight and aligned. So they all ended up slightly off center. In addition, when I did try to glue it, two of the dowels broke. I think it was because I was using very thin dowels. I should have used thicker ones. So it meant I had to do it this way. And actually, I'm glad I did because this was a much better way of doing it. It looks nicer, I think, and is stronger. Just peeling off the tape now. And quick cup of tea. And we can add some wax. This is my own wax. And it's made from tongue oil and beeswax. And I just put a coat on fairly thickly to begin with. And then leave it for a while. I leave it for at least half an hour, though I think you could probably just leave it for five or ten minutes. Let it soak in. And then with a clean cloth, polish it off. And there we have my finished product. Just go and get the pot, make sure it fits. Yeah, I'm really pleased with that. I think it looks nice. There we go. And some artsy pictures to finish with. Thanks for watching and maybe it's even inspired you to have a go at making one yourself. I hope you join me again. Cheerio!